I wanted to do for this video was watch a bad animated film and make some jokes. And what ended up happening was me watching the movie and then going on an investigation through a fraud case revolving around the movie and here's how it all started. One of my favorite things to do in my spare time is look up famous actors on Wikipedia and see what kind of weird movies and shows they've been in. And that is exactly what led me to making this video because you see, on one dreary day, I was on the Jim Belushi Wikipedia page when I noticed he was in a movie called Tugger, the Jeep 4x4 who wanted to fly. A name so specific, I had to inquire more. And the resulting experience left me with not only about a bajillion questions about the movie itself, but also with an investigation to a fraud case. Here's a little background on the movie before we get started. Tugger the Jeep 4x4 Who Wanted to Fly is about a Jeep named Tugger who wants to fly. Creative! From what I gathered, it had some theater premieres, but it didn't stay in the theaters very long. It was pretty much forgotten for a few years until it was released direct to DVD. It had a $2.4 million budget and stars Jim Belushi as Tugger, the title character, and Carrot Top uh, as his friend Shorty, a radio. We'll get into this later. Lastly, and here's where the fraud case comes in. The movie was directed by a man named Jeffrey Verub? Rob, who was, according to Wikipedia, a pioneer of 3D animation and movies, and even worked on quite a few projects like the original 3D Casper movie, the Rugrats movie, and even Milan. So he had some big credits to his name. But also, according to Wikipedia, he was arrested in 2010 in Florida on 13 counts of fraud. And I found out with some digging, this movie is the reason why. <laughs> but you know what? We'll circle back to that, because for now, I think we should give the movie a watch first, because I feel like seeing the movie really adds another layer to how weird this whole story is. So the movie opens up and we get some narrated backstory about Tugger's existence. He was made during World War II as a transport vehicle and during the war he gets badly damaged from barbed wire I guess or driving off a cliff. Either way he's badly damaged. And to fix him the engineer working on him decides to replace his engine fan with an airplane propeller. And this is what starts our story of Tugger, a 4x4 who wants to fly. After the war, Tugger gets sold to an airfield. As fate, or luck, would have it, he was sold to a small airport. And you couldn't find a happier Jeep. And we get transported to whatever modern date this is supposed to be. It did, they don't say. It's like the 60s or something. And this is where we really get to see those 3D animation accolades shine bright. I want to remind everybody as we watch this, this movie came out many years after Toy Story 2 and one year before Cars. So we open up on a scene of a plane breaking apart as it's flying. We're immediately hit with some action. And the pilot is calling for help. Mayday, Mayday, this is 40738. We have an emergency, over. Unfortunately for him though, this airfield is employed by some of the worst employees I've ever seen as they do not hear him radioing in despite being about two feet away from the radio. Also, I'm sorry, but this man has got to be one of the most unfortunately modeled 3D characters I've seen in my life. Like, I hate the generic 3D characters we get nowadays with movies, but I'll take that over when every movie had to have every character look ugly as shit. <laughs> like, I don't know, do people think that kids who are into that, that unfortunately modeled man decides to go talk to the chief. <laughs> nice night. Nice night. Which is where we get introduced to the chief and his dog, Max. And no, I do not know why his dog looks like that and has a mustache. Your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, that dog is apparently better at doing the job of the control room workers than the workers themselves. Ow. That's funny. I didn't think Max ever stopped. He doesn't. Only one thing. Because you see, Max loves tires a lot. And so when he stops eating this tire, it's like a sixth sense activates and he suddenly realizes something's wrong, which alerts everybody else. Uh... Yo, what's up with that guy? Who's that guy? That's Johnny. He loves playing with that spoon. <laughs> Weird. Johnny, what's wrong? Oh my God, Johnny, stop playing with the spoon. Oh my, who's, who died? Who died, Johnny? Tell me, Johnny, who died? <laughs> <laughs> He's back to playing with the spoon, so uh, uh, that's good. Oh. Also, I'm gonna mention it now, and I'm certainly gonna mention it later. This movie has some very bizarre camera work. So now we get introduced to Tugger. You know, the Jeep 4x4 who wants to fly. We got two minutes. We have to do something! 
They need our help! He overhears the communication about the plane via his radio friend Shorty. Now this brings me to one of my first big conundrums with this movie. What defines sentience in this world? So like in the Cars movie, the cars can talk. So you can follow that pretty easily. In this movie, it's just whatever they feel like should talk can talk. For example, the radio can talk, but not the screwdriver next to the radio. Okay, men, you know the drill. I want all emergency vehicles. Oh my God, all of these people look so off-putting. Why did they make all the characters so ugly? So it's time for everyone to save the day by spraying foam on the tarmac. Now I'm not a firefighter. I'm not a plane crash enthusiast. Does this do anything? Because to me, it feels like at best, it does nothing. And at worst, it would make the landing more slippery for the plane. But anyway, that aside, Tugger nearly kills the chief. And of course, he gets yelled at because in this world, humans can talk to the cars. Just don't question it because no, it's never explained why humans can understand the cars. And it's never explained what makes a car sentient or an object sentient. These are just questions that are never answered because why would we world build that way? Tugger runs into things a lot in this. Like if he was a human, uh, he wouldn't have a driver's license. So the incompetence of this airfield only gets worse because everyone that sprayed foam for the plane is now stuck in the foam because they sprayed it around their vehicle. And I don't know, despite some of the vehicles just gliding over like the foam is nothing, this one vehicle gets stuck. Again, it doesn't make sense because they're on tarmac. The tires aren't getting dug into something. Holy shit, the chief died. Oh wait, no, he's fine. So Tugger gets this great idea to help save the day by kicking dirt up into the foam area. Two things about this scene. One, he only kicks dirt towards the chief who is not standing near the truck. And two, <laughs> They're on tarmac! Uh, How are you kicking dirt up? What? It's like the people making this movie just completely forgot about the things in the scene. And we're like, no, this will make sense. Like, sure, if I'm six, I'm not questioning this. But anyone else should be questioning this. But somehow it works, and the vehicle gets unstuck, and then the crew promptly pushed the vehicle in a different direction than the way it was facing. It's moving! <laughs> I don't... Look, we're gonna talk about the production of this movie later, but for now, just know, I none of this movie makes sense, and it's not gonna make sense. It's like every scene was made by completely different people who just have no idea what's going on. <laughs> now, because of Tugger's antics saving the day, he runs out of fuel, and somehow he's in the way of the plane, even though he, he wasn't before, he was off to the side, but now he's in front. I, I don't un I don't understand. He has to get pushed out of the way and they managed to get him out just in the nick of time. I don't know how they did it. And after watching this whole movie, I kind of wish that they uh, just let him get run over. Would have been a better ending. But hey, the plane lands perfectly fine, really building up all this tension for nothing. It doesn't even like slide and come close to a building. And to celebrate the landing, uh, everyone decides to pick up and throw the pilot. I don't know, maybe if I nearly just died in a plane crash, I wouldn't want to get picked up by a bunch of guys and thrown in the air. But the good times can't last forever because now the chief is mad at Tugger. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say, chief, but uh, thanks are not necessary. Thank you? You thought I was gonna thank you? Huh? The thing about this movie is nobody likes Tugger. There's like two people that actually like don't hate Tugger in this movie. And at first I was like, that's kind of mean. But as the movie goes on, you understand. Also, like, does the chief not look like the kid from Toy Story, but aged huh? up? So Tugger does his job of tugging the plane towards the hangar. Hey, hey, it's me. Me, Tugger. Are you okay, Bob? And, you know, he has this nice conversation with the plane. Who can also talk, by the way? The planes can talk as well, I guess. This is one of the characters who actually doesn't seem to hate Tugger, although we don't really see him much in the movie. Oh, and also I really hate how its mouth moves. <laughs> All right, so in the next scene, there's going to be some product placement. Now, it's really subtle, but just let me know if you guys notice it, all right? Did you catch it? Yeah, nice try, Target. Real good one. And now we get introduced to a few more characters named Ma and Pa. They are gas pumps, once again, really proving that the logic of what gets sentience in this movie makes no sense. Now, Ma, Tugger's headed over this way. You be nice. Also, they refer to Tugger as their son, which means 
my man. <laughs> but it's weird because at the beginning of the movie we see that people made Tugger. So this might just be like an adoptive son type scenario. But then why would they give the gas pumps the role of parents? Pa has to stick his fuel pump into Tugger, which look, I'm not gonna say it, all right? I would never myself say it. But if the wrong person saw this and knew how to draw, yeah, you, you, could, you could make an argument that this might be a little weird. Also, these gas pumps are old as shit. So like, have these gas pumps been around for like that long? Or were they just made sentient old? Imagine gaining sentience as an object, but you're just like an old person. So rambling aside, like all the other characters in this movie, Ma can't stand Tugger's dreams of wanting to fly. Just because he has that silly piece in him doesn't mean he needs to run around like a fool. She thinks they're silly. She's a certified hater. Pa, however, he's a real G, a real gas pump. <clears throat> he respects Tugger's dreams and is like one of the two or three people in this movie who actually support him throughout the whole thing. And what's wrong with Tugger wanting to fly? We stand, Pa. Well, you know, minus like the weird insinuations and uh, oh yeah, Pa is also a conspiracy theorist. I hear the military is doing all sorts of secret testing on unusual air transports. <laughs> Hogwash. And he killed a cat. Not to mention your little gasoline as medicine campaign. That was a good idea. It's just a shame that cat never fully recovered. Okay, maybe we don't stand Paul. Oh, and did I at any point during this video yet mention that this movie is a musical? No? This movie's a musical. Uh, the music itself is fine, like the beats. But the lyrics and the pacing of the songs are a little bit awkward and off-putting to the ears. You've gotta shine that propeller! Just wait till you see them sparkle! Build the right set of wings! The kind that will take me real high! Also, here's another classic jarring scene transition in this movie. For some reason, the second scene looks like it was rendered at a lower resolution. That's not even the only time this happens in the movie. And I actually did find something when I was doing research where somebody said they outsourced some of this movie to the Philippines. My guess is that some scenes were rendered by like just a completely different company and they used different settings and like no one on quality control if there was quality control. Bothered to check. So the next day, Tugger heads out to do his job of uh, driving around around, I guess. I mean, he's tugging, but we don't really see that. We mostly just see him driving around. And once again, we get some very strange camera angles, and we also get introduced to Frank the Ambulance. Now, he is not a major character, but he does look majorly high. Hey, watch where you're going, will you? Sorry, Frank. Just watching a takeoff. Sure you are. Oh, also Frank is like kind of an ass. I'd love to stay and chat with you kids. But some of us have to... Yeah, 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 whatever! Work around here! My guy was just standing around before Tugger came up to him to talk and continued to stand around after Tugger left and he's all like high and mighty about how he's got like a job to do. You weren't doing anything, dude! You look high as shit! I know you weren't doing anything! In this scene, Tugger has a plane attached to him. And in the next scene, he doesn't have a plane attached and he's going to pick up another plane. Hey, so when I was editing this, I noticed that in this scene particularly, you see the gas station with Ma and Pa, and in the next scene, you see the same building. But where's Ma and Pa? What did they do with Ma and Pa? They can't move, they're gas pumps. Where do they go? Anyway, we get introduced to another side character who is a ladder car, and she is super paranoid about people going under her ladder. It looks like you've guaranteed yourself five years bad luck. Hello? Five. Where are the vehicles in 3D space? You can't put Tugger there and the ladder car there, and then the next scene Tugger's here and the ladder car is here. This doesn't feel like it should be that complicated. How is there no sense of movement in any of these? Things are teleporting. Does Tugger teleport? Maybe he can do that, I don't know. And after this entire distraction, Tugger doesn't even go back and get the plane that he was supposed to get. He just leaves the scene in a completely different direction. So like what the writers or the animators or whoever just completely forgot there was a task at hand. So then we get a scene of Max the dog chasing Tugger around the entire airbase because he loves tires and the chief really needs to control this damn dog because how is that not a safety hazard? And look, there he is, the chief 
go into an outhouse, completely fine with the fact that his dog is a menace. Unfortunately for Tugger, he does lose Max, but then he runs into the outhouse. You know, the one thing he should be good at doing is paying attention to what's going on around him, because that's his only job is to drive. Also, do air bases not have bathrooms? So Tugger lets the chief know that they're finished their job, and the chief doesn't believe him, and honestly, I get it. My man didn't finish his job. He literally left one of the planes. Also, did they record this line separately? Fuel? Check. Generators? Check. Planes, trailers, freight? Check, check, check. Like, why does that one sound echoey, but like none of the other ones do? Check, sir. Don't call me sir. I work for a living. Don't forget it. Don't call me sir. I work for a living. What? Do people with jobs not get referred to as sir? After going through his list of things Tugger needs to do, the chief relents and gives him the day off. And to celebrate, Tugger and Shorty go to hang out in a destroyed plane in a junkyard. Which if you consider the planes are sentient in this world, you're hanging out in the corpse of something that was once alive. While you ponder that conundrum, Tugger talks with Shorty once again about wanting to fly. When a bulldozer named BD comes by and knocks the entire plane off the cliff, and at first, I thought he was getting murdered, but instead it's one big misunderstanding and Tugger is fine and he wants to go talk to the bulldozer. So, holy shit, Tugger flew right there. Guys, he isn't even on the ground, he can fly. So the reality over is not a murder attempt, but instead the bulldozer is just doing his damn job. He's bowling some doze, he's, he's dozing some bull. The bulldozer informs Tugger, there's gonna be some changes coming to the airbase, which is why he's out there. And when Tugger hears this, he gets really excited. So basically, the Air Force Base is getting bigger. Luke Air Force Base, this is amazing. How about that, huh? Look at all those new hangars. Yeah, I gotta admit, I've never seen a runway that long. It's gonna put us on the map. <laughs> which convinces Tugger that now is the time that he needs to learn to fly, because somehow those two things um, line up. I don't know. You heard the men, Shorty. Change is coming. This is my chance. This is my chance to fly. This really freaks Shorty out because Shorty, he's there to support his buddy Tugger, but the second he starts to actually want to do it, Shorty's like, no, we can't do this. This is like too crazy. They have a big fight where Shorty becomes just another hater trying to keep Tugger down. Whoa, you sound just like the rest of them. Maybe the reason everyone thinks it's crazy is because it is crazy! And so, next up, we get a dream sequence in which he can fly. We get another song. It's fine, I guess. There's birds, they sing. Tweet, 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 bop, shabada. Tweet, tweet is the word. I do believe that might be the greatest song I ever heard. The dream eventually turns into a nightmare sequence with Max the dog in a World War II fighter plane. This dog is literally nightmare material for cars. When we think of like the boogeyman, we think of like this gross creature coming to get us. When cars think of the boogeyman, they think of Max. And honestly, that dog's freaky looking, so I get it. But now Tugger's awake and it is time. Today is the day he is going to fly. And he sure looks fly. Okay, no, but seriously, his ass is not flying. We gotta hurry. It's still early. Nobody's up yet. Unfortunately, on his way to the runway, Max catches a glimpse of him and sets off a giant chase scene between Max and Tugger. As the nightmare foretold, This does not look good. <laughs> but you can't quite look away, can you? <laughs> no, I can't. It's like a train wreck. Jesus Christ, does a stair car want to see Tugger explode in a fiery accident? It's like a train wreck. After being chased around for some time, Tugger tries to go down the runway, and we are informed that there is an inbound plane coming. Everything on schedule? Uh, that's a roger, Chief. Inbound and five. Now this is despite the fact that when they left, Tugger said nobody would be up yet because it was early in the morning, which means one of two things. Either A, Tugger is bad with time and a sense of schedule, or B, that dog has been chasing Tugger for literal hours at this point. What's your dog doing on the runway with that Jeep? Please get that gourd-headed man out of here. We don't need to see him again. He can't be on my runway. Not now. Yeah, at this point, the Chief is understandably pretty frustrated that Tugger is in the way for this inbound plane. You know, because he's a massive liability. And then we got back to Tugger still going down the runway when it's suddenly dusk. Uh -huh. It was just so early in the morning that nobody started their job yet. And now, but a few minutes later in the movie, it is dusk. So by some miracle, Tugger starts to manage to actually fly a little bit. Unfortunately for him though, there is a plane coming directly behind him and it just straight up lands on Tugger and he dies. Thank you guys for watching. This was uh, another, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He doesn't die, unfortunately. 
Okay, how is it dark already? Are the days in this movie like five minutes long? Okay guys, so for my morning routine, I get out of bed, brush my teeth, then it's time for some breakfast and would you look at that? It's already time for bed. All right, see you guys for my next video. Continuity issues aside, out of the plane comes the tug, which I assume is a replacement for Tugger. That's kind of how they set it up. And now fair warning, this next scene might be a little bit gruesome. The chief has someone remove all of Tugger's tires and leaves him in a storage locker for years. Is this not the most fucked up thing you could do to a car in this universe? When Max grabs Tugger's fin in the chase scene as he's driving, he reacts in pain and that's not even attached to him properly. <laughs> How is this a movie for kids? Anyway, time for another song, I guess. I'm not giving up without a fight. All right, fast forward a few years and no, we never get to see the expansion of the Air Force because that would probably require them to model more stuff and they don't want to do that. So we do, however, get to see this guy. Who is he? I don't know. He's never given a name. He's a guy and he wants to buy some stuff. So worried that the guy is there to buy Tugger, Shorty decides to try and distract everybody. Jesus Christ, what is that walking animation? <laughs> That boy ain't right. They're really phoning it in in the last like 15 minutes here. The man does eventually find Tugger and decides to buy him and fix him up. I don't know if you realize what you have here. This is a genuine 1941 World War II Willys all-purpose utility Jeep. And with this scene of the man attaching the propeller to Tugger's face, you might be thinking that Tugger is going to fly. Like he's going to become a plane of some kind. He's gonna just fly away on Tugger and that's gonna be the end of the movie. Uh, nope. That doesn't happen. He just gives him a paint job and repairs some parts. And that's it. Time to celebrate. Man, I love the animations on this movie. Yeah, Tugger. Tugger. So on Tugger's way out, he gets to go talk to everybody for a bit and say, fuck off haters, I'm heading out of here. And while it's funny that they put zero animation effort into the guy in the car, it does raise another question, which is that we know that the cars can drive themselves. So do humans have any control or are you at the mercy of your vehicle every time you want to go somewhere? All right, car. Tim Hortons, please. All right, driving off a cliff. What? No, no, I didn't say that. No, 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 no. Anyway, after his grand send off, the movie ends with Tugger finally getting to fly. Kinda. He gets to sit in an airplane, which I guess is a more realistic ending than Tugger being able to actually fly. But like in a world where everything can just talk for some reason, like why not just let Tugger fly? For real. It's such a weird way to end a movie for kids about following your dreams in that even at the end of it all, it's like, listen, you probably can't achieve your dream, but you can get kind of close. Also, there's no way leaving that cargo door open is safe for Tugger or the guy just casually walking around. Tugger and Shorty return in Tugger and the Kansas Twister. No, they don't. And like I was saying at the beginning of the video, the director Jeffrey Verub was arrested for fraud and it is entirely connected to the Tugger movie. First, watch the trailer for the independent CG feature called Tugger the Jeep 4x4 who wanted to fly, then go and read the story in the Orlando Sentinel about how this became the independent animated feature from hell, thanks to the film's director, animation veteran Jeffrey Verub. What isn't mentioned in this article is that Verub probably convinced a lot of investors to part with their money by selling this as a Christian project. The Christian aspect of the story comes out in the article's comment section as well as in this post from the blog of Sentinel film critic Roger Moore. I did read the article from the Orlando Sentinel that they referred to. It's long, but here's a quick summary. So distribution deals never happened with this movie and were straight up lied about. Pretty much nobody got paid who worked on it, including the movie's co-director Woody Woodman, who apparently came up with the Tugger branding and idea and pretty much all of the things revolving around Tugger. But on top of that, Jeffrey went behind Woody's back and got the copyright for Tugger and then tried to defraud him, making him sign contracts that Jeffrey would never plan to uphold. And while this was all happening, of course, Staff were quitting constantly because they weren't getting paid on a regular basis. So basically, too long didn't read. Nothing went right. This whole thing was a shit show. There are also some interesting comments left on that article. Uh, here's one of my favorites. It is a shame what has happened on this project, but does anyone think bashing here is going to repay the investors and creditors? I would like to see them all repaid. So maybe if we get this film distributed, it can do just that. 
Now let's try to make something good out of something bad. We are here at Animated Family Films. Stay tuned for the national children's premiere of Tugger. Throughout the US, churches will be premiering Tugger while attendees will bring food to refill the food banks of America. For more info, go to TuggerJeep.com. Let's all move on and step up to doing what this film initially was intended to do by George Parsons, the original creator of Tugger. Oh, and don't worry, I went to TuggerJeep.com. It sure is a website from 2005. And yes, that is an exclusive Tugger Bible study PDF. PDF. And yes, I did read it. It mostly just talks about dreams. It kind of seems honestly inoffensive and uninteresting. My favorite line from it has got to be, a dream of purpose is a big thought about how God can use you. Nothing quite like telling children they are pawns for God's use. Oh, also there's a puzzle included. Um, it has to be one of the most awkward puzzles I tried to put together. <laughs> yeah, I did not expect this video to encompass such a big plot when I first started watching the movie. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this much deeper dive into a badly animated movie than was probably necessary, feel free to subscribe and leave a like on the video. It helps out a lot. And also it motivates me to keep finding weird things to talk about. Also comments help out a ton. So if you watched bad movies as a kid and there's any of them that you want me to talk about in particular, feel free to suggest them in the comments below and maybe I'll give them a watch for a future video. All right, thanks guys.